Uh, g'day everybody, welcome back. Um, radio. Um, where to next with this project? So, um, in the last one, we sort of, I suppose, fine-tuned some of the basic stuff. So, um, you know, I was talking about groups. So, you know, trying to find the outline of floor above, um, etc. But you, you know, you can group up anything. Um, very much like the um, group command in AutoCAD, if you're familiar with it. Okay, so what I thought I'd take us to now would be another um, a step of annotation, which is um, tagging. Okay, so this is put in window. Well, we're going to focus on window and door tags, but the reality is is that we can tag um, anything in Revit. So, um, well, pretty much everything anyway. So um, anyway, let's get cracking into it. So um, here's my ground floor plan. Um, I need to be in the annotate tab up here, and we've got a whole section here on tagging. And uh, we'll drop down there. Oh, there's nothing too serious in there. Okay, so there's a lot of different things that we can um, do here. Okay, but the one I'm going to focus on initially is just basically um, these two here. So we've got tag by category and tag all um, or tag all not tagged. Okay, so tag by category is we basically um, click on each item and we apply a tag to it. Um, this one develops it a little bit further. So what we're going to do is we're going to do, um, start by tagging some of the windows and then we'll tag the doors. Okay, so I'm just going to go tag by category, TG is the short code. Okay, so in our options bar here, um, there's a few little you know options here. So we've got um, a horizontal or a vertical alignment for the tag. Uh, we can have a leader for the tag if we want it. Uh, we've got attached in, friend, um, um, some spacing issues there, um, which I've never really dealt with. Okay, but anyway, let's just crack into it. So all I really need to do is just oh, hover in. There we go. See, hover over a window, and there we go. There's a tag. Okay. So if I left click, I'll drop that down. So there's our tag. It is horizontally aligned, and it has um, a leader. I can turn that leader off. Oh, there it is. There, leader line. Turn it off. And if I wanted to, I could I could change it here. I could change it here. I could change it to vertical if I wanted as well. So it depends on which way you want it to be read. So I just hit Control Z there to undo that. So um, as a general rule, I per I personally try to not have leaders everywhere. I find that the extra lines can be confusing. Okay, so there we go. So and now we we'll just basically repeat the process. So we can go tag all tag by category. Okay, there's another window there. Uh, there's another one there. See what happens? Like, so if I hit the wind at wall, it gives me a wall tag. Okay, so it's just, you know, uh, that one doesn't, these ones don't have tags assigned to them at this stage. There you go, there's a stair tag there. So lots of tags. So at the moment, all I'm doing is just tagging, I've just tagged the windows. Okay, if you want to move them, just quite a simple process of highlighting the tag grabbing that little move icon and then just repositioning it to exactly where you want it to be. Now these are this is these are the default tags from Revit. I personally find them a bit chunky. I have my own series that I've created. Um, you can obviously make your own as you go. So there we go. So there's um Uh, the window tags. Okay, so what I'm now going to do is I'm going to use this other one here, so the tag all not tagged. Okay, so basically what this does is it tags everything of one type in one go. So everything that can be seen in, on a picture, it will get that tag. Okay, so um, which is quite handy if you've got a lot of tagging to do. Okay. So, so if I click on this one, the first thing it wants to do is, okay, which elements do I want to tag? 
Okay, so which ones, you know, am I going to tag everything for? So if I go down and here somewhere, okay, the door tags right at the top. So I want to, I want to click on that. Um, and that's pretty much it. Okay, but if I wanted to select my elements, I just hold the control key down. Okay, and I can select. Um, oh, tag all. You can select other elements. So you can tag all of these if you wanted to, if they were visible in your thing. But all I want to do is right, just click on my door tags. I'm just going to go apply. And OK. And there they are. So door number seven. Door two, one. Now, one of the big things you'll notice here is the, the sequencing. It's not right. OK. Because the doors and windows are all ta they're tagged in, a, in, in according to the sequence that they were dropped or placed into the, the project. Which means there is a little bit of, um, you know, we've got a little bit of work to do down the track, which is, you know, once everything's tagged, you need to re tag, just change the numbers. Okay, and that's actually pretty easy. So let's just say, for example, okay, um, this door here, it's at the start of the sequence, so I would really want to call that one number one. Now, I'll just take note there, I've got number one there as well. Okay, so if I click on this, Okay, and if I click on that again, okay, it gives me a, the ability to um, change that number. So if I change that to one and then go enter, okay. So what's going to do here? It's going to tell me in the bottom right hand corner that the elements have duplicate mark values, which is correct because I have a number one here. I also have a number one here. But what I can now do is I can go change that one to two. Okay. And it's obviously going to keep on doing this every time it finds a duplicate. It's going to tell me, okay, until there are no more duplicates, um, or unless we fix them up via the scheduling. So, um, yeah, it's just um, the way it is. But yeah, it's, it's nice that Revit does tell you there's a duplicate number. Um, from my recollection with AutoCAD, uh, it doesn't tell you. So if you you can have two numbers in there, and if uh, it's up to you to spot them. Okay, so we're going to go to the first floor plan. We'll tag that as well. So first floor plan. Okay, so we can do the same here. So I can now just go annotate. I'm going to go tag all. I'm going to choose my door tags. And I'm going to hold the control key down. I'm going to select window tags. So I'm going to tag all the windows and all the doors in one movement. I'm just going to go apply. There you go. See them in the background. And OK. Done. You know. So it's a pretty simple process. Now, we're not restricted to um, doing this in plan view. I can also go into elevation. And I can go tag all again. Repeat this process. So all the doors, all the windows, apply, and OK. A little tricky thing here. It will pick up windows, like if it can see the edge of a window you know, and a, a return in the wall, it will also tag those. So those ones there, um, you either need to hide or delete because you obviously don't want those tags to be um, lighting up there. Um, so that's another area. Again, we're also not restricted. We can go into our section, okay, and again, we can apply tags in here, okay. And the beauty of this is, is that the tags are accurate each and every time we change them. So say for example, um, I've got this door, so if I go to my first floor plan, okay, there's door number eight there. I could change that to door XYZ just for argument's sake. It's going to let me do it. There's no, doesn't seem to be any restrictions as to what you can name it, XYZ. If I go back to my section, that door has now been relabeled as XYZ. So, in summary, as long as the sequence is correct, it's Revit will always make sure that your door tags and window tags and all tags are accurate. Okay, so it's one less um, thing to worry about when you're dealing with the annotation side of things. Okay, so what we'll do in the next um, video is that we'll 
look at what happens with these tags when we try to, you know, when we when we're doing the scheduling. Okay, so we'll have a quick look at door and window schedules, etc., um, in the next video. Until then, we will see you later.